Well, hi there, boys and girls. We are sticking with implicit differentiation and derivatives for now. And we're going to review a little bit about how to go from a limit statement straight to the answer from a derivative instead of doing all that algebra. You'll practice questions like this, you'll, but you're also going to do some implicit differentiation tomorrow because we're leading into related rates and we're going to need to be masters of imp diff once we get there. Uh, but anyway, this video is simply about reviewing this statement, but hopefully we're going to notice a shortcut. So let's take a look at this first example. It's got the limit as h drops to zero and we've got this difference quotient. And if we could recognize that this working all of this out is going to give us a derivative, then we can combine that knowledge with what we just learned, like all the shortcuts to find a derivative. So let's combine that and see if we can figure this out. We know that doing all of this work is supposed to give us a derivative. And so what we have to figure out is what is the function that we're trying to take a derivative of. Now if it's directly in this form, f of x is sitting right here after the minus sign. So right here in, in a, a, we can tell that the function that we want to find the derivative of, or f of x, is 2x cubed. Now it's not negative 2x cubed, f of x is after the minus sign, so the minus sign is not part of the function. So doing this process is going to find f prime of x for us. Well luckily for us, we just spent about a week and a half learning derivative rules. We learned power rule, we learned quotient, chain, lots of things. So now that we can make this connection, we can do this without doing the algebra. Since we've recognized that f of x is 2x cubed, f prime is going to equal, because of the power rule, 6x squared. And so doing all of this algebra would produce the derivative, which we know is 6x squared. All we had to identify is what is f of x. f of x is right here after the minus sign, so it's asking for the derivative of 2x cubed. Now you could go back and do all that algebra if you'd like expand x plus h cubed and simplify everything, but I promise you, you're going to get 6x squared if you do it correctly. Well, that's sort of nice. Let's take a look at another example here. This is in the same form, the limit as h drops to zero, of a difference quotient. And I've got some f of x plus h, but I'd really like to pay attention to what's right here after the minus sign. What's after the minus sign is f of x. So I know that f of x is cosine of 5x. And so I can find f prime if I know the derivative of cosine and also if I know the chain rule. So doing all of this work would work out to be the derivative of cosine of 5x. So the derivative of cosine of anything is negative sine of that angle and then we're going to because of the chain rule multiply that times the derivative of the inside and I'm going to clean this up a little bit and call that negative 5 sine of 5x. If you were to do your pre-cal rules um, and expanding cosine of a plus b this is what you would get as the answer to that and so the, all the all the magic happens from you recognizing what is f of x and then taking the derivative of that. Now the only other way it can get a little more difficult is if they're trying to find the derivative at a specific point. And I'm going to write down what this one looked like. This was the limit. Remember we had three versions of it. As h approaches zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. And this would give us not only the derivative, but it would give us the derivative at the point A. So it would, it would go ahead and do all of that work for us. This is going to be a little more difficult for you to see, but because things are sort of switched, A is probably the easiest thing to see in this form because it's right here in front of the plus H. So I know I'm trying to find the derivative of some function at pi over 6. And I guess F of X is not so hard to see. F of X is right here. The tricky part is this this part right here has usually been simplified, so let me walk through and see if we can figure this out. I believe that we're dealing with the function sine of x. And on top of that, I think we're trying to find the derivative of sine at the specific point pi over 6. So I'm trying to find f prime at pi over 6. Now why did this 1 half, what does this 1 half equal? Well that is f of a. 
And so if f of x is sine of x, let's see if that is true. Is the sine of pi over 6 equal to 1 half? So I'll repeat myself because I'm having cursor issues. Is the sine of pi over 6 really equal to 1 half? And you should know that that is a true statement. So this gets a little tricky right here. So, so if it's in this form and your f of x is not at the end and there's been numbers plugged in, it's easier to find your f of x here at the front and then your a would be pi over 6. So I'm trying to find the derivative of sine of x and then after I find the derivative of sine of x I'm going to plug in pi over 6. So this is really what this question is asking. We want the derivative of sine of x at the value pi over 6. So we should know that f prime of x is cosine. The derivative of sine is cosine. And so the derivative's value at pi over 6 should be the cosine of pi over 6. Now if you can't remember how to do that, let's draw a little triangle and see if we can't figure that out. So pi over 6 you should know is 30 degrees. So I'm going to write this as degrees even though we always use radians in calculus. Let's make a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And you should know that the side across from the 30 degree angle we're going to label as a 1 and the hypotenuse is a 2 and the side across from the 60 degree angle gets a square root of 3. You should just know that. That's, there's some things we just need to know. The only other one is the 45, 45, 90 which of course is 1, 1 square root of 2. But for the 30, 60, 90 the 1 goes across from the 30, a square root of 3 across from the 60 and a 2 on the hypotenuse. And you should know that cosine, I, th I think I've said you should know a lot, but these are some things that you just should know. The cosine of 30 degrees would be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and so that's going to work out to be square root of 3 over 2. So we get a slope for sine at a specific value, and so this derivative or this limit statement was a little different. So you'll practice that again tomorrow. Um, I wanted to take, take advantage of the fact that we can use those derivative rules that we just learned to answer these limit statements without going through all of that silly algebra. So I will see you guys tomorrow.